Hi, I'm Goose, and welcome to Color Theory in Minecraft. Today, we are going to talk about temperature. Now, temperature can get a little tricky. So I know I said these are going to be quick, digestible little bits of information, but we're going to get a little more into it with this one because it's kind of hard to explain it without doing that. All right, so what is temperature? Well, temperature is a description of a color's placement on the color wheel in relation to the colors that are around it. Now that probably doesn't help a lot, but it'll make more sense in a sec, I promise. Generally speaking, closer to red is warm, closer to blue is cool. If we split these six guys right down the middle, we got cool colors and warm colors. But there are a lot of exceptions and you really have to pay attention to what colors are around it. This is when relativity really becomes important because what if we have something like this? Is that closer to blue? Or is that closer to red? Because if you're looking at a color wheel, purple's gonna be right in between the two of them. So is it warm or is it cool? It's hard to say if it's just by itself. So this is when we have to look at it in relation to the colors that are around it. So for example, we have purple and orange. This is gonna be the warm color. This is gonna be the cool color. This is closer to red. This is closer to blue. But if we put blue over here, all of a sudden this is the cool color and this is the warm color. Generally speaking, you could say that these are both cool colors, but in relation to each other, we have cool and we have warm. Now, things are gonna get even weirder if we throw red right here. How do we categorize those? Well, we know that that's warm and we know that that's cool. The weird thing is that we can say that the purple and the red are warm in relation to the blue, but you can also say the purple and blue are cool in relation to the red. So things get kind of tricky. This is why paying attention to what's around it is really important and why I stress relativity so much, especially in temperature. I have some examples here that I hope will help clear things up and uh, maybe give you a little bit of practice. We have orange concrete and warped warp block. Now remember, closer to red is warm, closer to blue is cool. So in this case, the orange concrete is gonna be warm and the warp block is gonna be cool. Now we'll go to one that's a little bit trickier. They're both kind of close to purple and pink, but cherry wood is gonna be closer to red and amethyst is closer to blue. So in this case, amethyst is cool, cherry wood is warm. Over there, amethyst was the cool one, but over here, because it's next to something that is even closer to blue, amethyst is gonna be the warm one, ice is gonna be the cool one. See how that changes because there's something different next to it? Now this one's a little tricky. I want you to really take a second look at these and think which one is warmer and which one is cooler. Because the dead coral leans a little bit more towards pink and the tough block leans a little bit more towards blue, we have warm on the left and cool on the right. Just like I was talking about before, the value and the saturation don't necessarily affect the temperature. So even though these are both very low saturation and about the same value, you can still pick out a temperature between them. And that leads us to this little challenge. Think about all the things we talked about before. And in the comments, I want you to rate these from warmest to coolest. Now we're going from the warmest color down to the coolest color. I have a bigger one over here, so it's a little bit easier to see the local color of each one of the blocks. And go ahead and rank these from warmest to coolest and put it down in the comments. I'll let you know if you're right, and if you're wrong, I'll tell you why. So you might be thinking, okay, that's cool or confusing, but how is that useful to my builds? Well, that's what I got these guys for. In nature, we have kind of an interesting relationship between light and shadow and warm and cool temperatures. They kind of act like opposites. For instance, if we have a warm colored light landing on an object, the shadow is going to appear cool. Same goes if we have a cool colored light landing on an object, the shadow is going to appear warm. Now, this is much easier to describe when you're looking at real objects, but for the sake of keeping it in Minecraft, we're going to switch to some shaders that do an okay job of replicating it. And there we go, we got shadows. If we go over to this one on the far left, the entire sphere is light gray concrete, but we're going to take some samples of it and look at them a little bit closer. We're gonna look at this ledge right here and this ledge right here. I'm gonna pull these up separate so you can compare them a little better, but you can see that where the light is hitting is much warmer and where the shadow is is much cooler. 
Now, one of the reasons that this happens is because of what's called reflected light. Shadows act kind of like mirrors. Because the sky and the general atmospheric color here is blue, the shadows are going to reflect that blue and appear cooler. You can see the shadows down here, they're not just darker than the white concrete, they're also cooler. It's a little bit more blue, and that's just white. You can apply this principle even without using shaders. Now this sphere right here, I have it separated into the values of the shadows. We have the darkest ones down here, we got the highlights up top. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the shaders, and I'm going to show you how this replicates what we saw here. This is focusing mostly on the values, so we're going from light down to dark, but there's a little bit of information about the temperature as well. Try to keep these guys some of the cooler grays, and then we have some warmer grays in the transition. Now if we want to accentuate this even more, I have this guy right here. This is a temperature map of the values of the light and the shadow. I know that's a lot, but all that means is we have a warm light, so the colors are warm, and then we have cool shadows, so the colors are cool. Now you might be like, Goose, I thought you said that red was the warmest and blue was the coolest. Why do you have yellow up top? Well, there are two reasons for that. One is so that it's a little bit easier to differentiate and keep in line with the value, so that we still have high value going down to low value. But there's also something very interesting about the light system in Minecraft that I just figured out. Now I want to say that this is vanilla game. There's no shaders, no mods. This is just the basic lighting system that is in the game normally. We have the sun directly above, and this line of blocks casting a shadow. It's going to cast a shadow all the way down to the ground. I put some light sources on either side so that you can see the transition from light into shadow as the game portrays it. This is where temperature comes into play. As far as I can tell from some other tests that I did, the game assumes that all light sources are warm and all shadows are cool. So regardless of what you use as a light source, sea lantern, torch, redstone torch, it's going to start with warm light and it's going to transition into cool shadows. Something else that's interesting about this is that it has different kinds of shadows built in. Now you can see how it's a little bit darker right along the edge of the warm colors and then it kind of lightens up in the middle. That's called a core shadow and this is called a reflected shadow or reflective light. First off, I think it's really interesting that they add that in so that the edges of all the light sources are actually darker than what's around it. But the temperature transition is what's really interesting to me. As far as I can tell, the light and shadow and temperature system in the game always follows these colors as a gradient in terms of temperature. We start with yellow, orange, red, and then the shadows are violet around the transitions and then level out at a cyan or blue color in the middle. I know those colors aren't super apparent, especially in the shadows, but they're very, very subtle changes. If you really take a moment to look at it, I'm hoping the recording translates it the same. There is a little bit of violet along the edge, and then the center leans a little bit more towards cyan. Make of that what you will, but I thought that was really interesting. I also thought it was really interesting that sea lanterns cast their own shadow and illuminate their own shadow. So you can see more of a straight line of that gradient right here. I haven't really messed around with this much, but I think there's a lot of really interesting things that you could do with this. I know temperature can be really tricky. It can be really confusing. Trust me, it took me quite a while to wrap my head around it too. But I really hope that some of the things here helped you understand it more. So this week, I'd like you to build something, even if it's just some color charts or some practice or, you know, a sphere like those over there, and come and post it in our Discord. I'm going to put the link down below in the description. You can come and say hi, check out other people's builds, ask questions, whatever you'd like to do. I would love to see you there. So again, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe because we have a lot more stuff to go over. And I will see you next time in Color Theory and Minecraft. See ya.